This video will demonstrate the tight integration between Infoblox and VRA 7.1. What you will notice here is the Infoblox environment is currently very clean. There are no IP addresses or DNS records currently provisioned. So I'm going to go ahead and submit a request to provision an NSX load balancer with two Linux virtual machines. And the plugin is currently default, configured with its default values. So let's go ahead and submit a request. And VRA will start the process of provisioning the NSX load balancer and the VMs shortly. The first thing you will notice is that the allocate workflow will be automatically invoked to allocate an IP address for the NSX load balancer. So if you switch over to the Infobox environment and do a refresh, you will see the IP address of the NSX load balancer currently assigned. And then shortly after that, the allocate workflow will be executed two more times for the two Linux virtual machines. So both the IP address and DNS host record are configured for the VMs. So if you go to Infoblox, do another refresh, and you will see the IP address and DNS host records for the VMs have been created. And if you do NS lookup to verify the operations of the VM, you can see it's mapping to the right IP addresses. Now, if you click on the Cloud tab, you can see that the VRA tenant automatically got created. And if you go inside the tenant, you will see the NSX load balancer name along with the two Linux uh, VM names. And if you do a refresh, you can see the progress of the where we are so far. Now, we're going to have to wait for the NSX load balancer to be created. That will take a few seconds. And then shortly after that, the two Linux virtual machines will be created. And as you will see shortly, the IP addresses for the Linux VMs will be automatically assigned. So now if you click on the Linux 3 VM, you will see its IP address. It ends with .10. And for Linux 4, you will see it ends with .11. Now if you go back to items, and let's look at the current setup, and you can see that the environment is currently set up with the NSX load balancer and the two VMs, and everything is configured properly. So let's go ahead and test out this environment. So I'll go to the Windows VM, and I launch the web browser, which will automatically connect me to the NSX load balancer IP address. And if I go ahead and do a web browser refresh, you can see that HTTP traffic is being load balanced between the two VMs, .10 and .11. So now let's go ahead and scale out the environment by adding a third virtual machine. So I'd like to dynamically HTTP load balance traffic among three virtual machines. So I click on the scale out button, and then I will go ahead and increase the number of VMs from two to three. This will automate the entire process of adding a third VM to the load balancing pool. Now within a few seconds, you will notice that the allocate workflow will be automatically invoked to provision the IP address and DNS host record for the VM. So here it is getting automatically invoked. And if you go to Infoblox, do a refresh, you will see that the IP address and the DNS host record automatically got created. And if you do NS lookup, you will see it automatically resolved correctly to .12. And if you go to the Cloud tab, you will see that the Linux 5 VM is, has been added. And if you go to data management, let's get more information about the Linux 5 VM. So we can go uh, select it, extensive attribute, and you can see a lot of information about the VM. VM ID number, VM name, etc. So now we'll go back to VRA, do a refresh to, so we can monitor the progress and wait for the Linux VR 5 virtual machine to be spun up. And you can see shortly it's been assigned the .12 IP address. So now let's test out. Within a few seconds, we're going to test out the operation of the load balancer. So you can see everything completed successfully. And if I go back to items, we want to double check that the new VM has been added to this NSX load balancing pool. And you can see it's, it's there already along with the IP address that ends with .12. And now let's go ahead and refresh the browser, and you can see now I can load balance among the three VMs, .10, .11, .12.
automatically on the fly, no user intervention. I'm scaling out my load balancing pool. Now I'll go back to VRA and now I'm going to scale in the environment by removing a virtual machine from the NSX load balancing pool. So I'm decreasing the number from three back to two. And what you will notice shortly is instead of running the allocate workflow, the release workflow will be automatically executed. So let's monitor the progress of the environment here. And then what you'll see shortly is the release workflow will be executed and that will put the IP address back in the pool and delete the DNS host record. And now if you go to items, you can see that the Linux VM is no longer there. The Linux 5 VM is no longer there. And if you go to Infoblox DDI, do a refresh, you will see that the Linux 5 entry is no longer there. And if I do NS lookup, you'll see it fails. There's nothing there. And now if I do a refresh of the web browser, you can see I'm load balancing back to two VMs between .10 and .11. So you can see I'm easily doing scale out, scale in. Now let's go ahead and destroy the entire environment. So I'd like to destroy the NSX load balancer and the Linux VMs. So I submit a request to destroy the entire environment. And what you will see shortly is the NSX is the uh, two virtual machines will be shut down first, followed by the uh, NSX load balancer. So as you will see shortly, the Linux 3 and 4 will be shut down and deleted. And shortly after that, the release workflow will be executed twice to put the IP addresses and DNS host trackers for the VMs back in the pool. And now I'm going to shut down the NSX load balancer and delete it. And the release workflow will be executed one more time. And now if I go to the Infoblox environment, do a refresh, you will see that IP addresses, DNS host record are all deleted.